Regarding that, just with other sports, I, I noticed myself, I used to be a big football fan. And this season, I just seemed completely disinterested just based on the conditions that we're in, not to mention very little to no fans being there. From a NBA standpoint, now that we're outside of the bubble and really I think only Golden State has those digital fans, have you noticed a drop-off in just uh, fan interest just based on the circumstances and just the COVID cases and just from the presentation? Have you just noticed kind of the NBA just seeing a dip from, from that point in terms of fan interest? Well, it's been interesting because – I mean, I've I've seen the press releases that say that they've had like the best ratings in five years or whatever for opening night. I don't I don't know. I, I'm not really a ratings expert, so I don't really know what that is from. Uh, you know, for, you know how that's continued or I'm it's, I'm not really like a a sports ratings expert or, or anything. I will say I've gone to a few Blazers games with no fans as media, and it's kind of weird just being in an, in an empty arena, just watching these games. They have piped in crowd noise. They try to make it feel like it's a normal game, but you look and you see all these empty seats and it's just bizarre. So from that standpoint, it's kind of weird. And I think there, there are some situations where like it, it just, it feels like it is impacting the product a little bit. Just, I don't know whether it's just because there's, you know, they had a shorter training camp, but does it feel to you like there are just way more blowouts this year than oh, there have been normally? That we, we, my, my co-host and I brought that up last week, like insane blowouts, like by a massive margin. <laughs> uh, we and were then they're, discussing. and then they're doing yeah. these two game series where yes. you play, you play a team twice in the same city, which, and, and so far, at least for the, for, for most of them, or I, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but for, a lot of them, the where teams play each other twice in a row. This happened when the Blazers went down to San Francisco to play the Warriors. The first game, the Blazers blew out the Warriors. The second game, the Warriors blew out the Blazers. So it's just a whole lot of these two teams. No matter on paper how they look, how they are, you know, talent wise, there's just all these results where you're just like, like the Jazz got blown out the other night by the Nets without Kevin Durant. Like sure. <laughs> there's just. There's so much stuff that like it's it's so weird to even try to like predict like, oh, this is who I think is going to win the title. This is who this is how I think these two teams match up if they were to meet in the playoffs, because you just don't I'm, I'm, I'm not great with predictions anyway. But especially this year, there's just so much going on that is so unprecedented that you just don't know how to react to any of it or what's real or what's not real or. You know, are the Orlando Magic still going to be five and two, or are, are they still going to be one of the best teams in the East, or is that kind of a fluke? Like, there's always some weird fluky stuff at the beginning of the season, but now more so than ever, I think, just because of how strange of a position everybody's in. Like that, that's just kind of where everything is at. Um, in 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 saying that, do you think, in terms of the teams that have performed better than expectations, like you you mentioned, the Orlando Magic, the the Suns, even to some extent the Knicks. Um, should we just wait until we get maybe 30 games in to really have a proper assessment of these teams? Um, it just seems like it's really just hard to get a beat on what's going on. I mean, it was even bizarre with like Stephen Curry in terms of people saying he's gone off to a terrible start. His stats were fine. And now he, you know, he gone off for that 62 point game. And I think he had 38 points the other night. Like he, he it's clear he's fine. But it just seems like people are just overreacting and just making some snap judgments when the stats prove otherwise. Should there just be some more data that should come out before we make a accurate prediction regarding playoff um, seeding? There's always a lot of early season overreactions. And I think in the specific case of the Warriors, the turning point for them was that when Draymond Green came back, and I know that statistically his his numbers haven't been great, but he just does so much for them on the defensive end. And he does just him being on the floor allows so many other guys to get more open looks because he's such a smart playmaker that that's real. I think to me, that's made a huge difference for the Warriors. But as far as just overall in the league, yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on where you just there, there you know, there's there's early season stuff that there's all there's. Again, there's always early season stuff. I remember the Timberwolves last year got off to this great start, and it seemed like the Timberwolves were finally going to be, you know, turning it around and, you know, maybe being a playoff team again. And then it just kind of fell off a cliff. I think at some point it's going to normalize in terms of like the teams we thought were going to be good are going to be good. The teams we thought were going to be bad are going to be bad. It's just early on in the season, especially, you know, a year like this where 
everybody's getting used to playing with no fans. The travel schedule is weird. Uh, there's so many more restrictions about what guys can and can't do when they're on the road that I think looking at it a couple of weeks into the season and saying, this is who I think is good. This is who I think is bad. Then thinking it's going to carry over, I think is kind of foolish, honestly. Um, Sean, one last question for you. Uh, I'm last asking a lot of journalists that we've had on just regarding your, your mindset covering the league since the pandemics happened. What challenges have you encountered um, since the pandemic has happened? And do you think once hopefully things get back to somewhat of a decent normal, do you see a lot of these pandemic um I guess, for lack of a better term, procedures that are in place now, do you see them sticking around even after the pandemic is over? God, I hope we don't do Zoom calls anymore once the thing is over. It's, I, like, the the Zoom thing, and I actually have to give a lot of credit to the PR staffs around the league for being able to put all that stuff together, and it's been pretty smooth, but especially for someone like me, where a lot of what I do is dependent on getting one-on-one interviews with people, that just does not happen anymore. You can't, there's really no way to get a lot of that to happen during this pandemic when you're just kind of on the same Zoom calls as everybody else. I have been going to games in Portland, but there's really no point in terms of the access. You basically go watch the game from a seat in the arena and then you get on the Zoom call, which you could just get on from home. And there are some reporters here in Portland that normally would go to games that have just decided since there's no extra access, it's not really worth the risk. I think losing the one-on-one access and losing the locker room access, I think has hurt the quality, not just of my work, but of the work of, you know, a lot of other people who would normally have to, you know, you know, have the ability to talk to guys off to the side or pull someone to, uh, to the side in the locker room. And then you have to ask these feature questions on these zoom calls where then you basically are giving away what your angle is and then anybody else can just take whatever the quote is that you ended up uh getting even if it was like for a specific story like it's a lot of stuff i mean i think the good writers and the good reporters have been able to find ways to navigate it but i i will not be sad when the zoom access goes away i have i have and i have heard from people who have talked to like I'm, I'm a, I'm a member of the Pro Basketball Writers Association, and I know that our leadership has had conversations with the league office about this stuff. And obviously, right now, what it is right now is just what it has to be. Just from a safety standpoint, they don't want us getting near any of the players or any of that stuff. I totally understand that, but uh, apparently, the league office has assured us that once this pandemic is over and is under control we're going to get our old level of access back. And they have also kind of hinted, this is not like 100%, but they haven't, I'll I'll just say this, they haven't said for sure that the way it is right now is the way it's going to be the rest of the season. I think they're hoping that by April or May, around the time of the playoffs, enough people have gotten the vaccine that things have calmed down a little bit. And then maybe at the very least, even if they're not letting us into locker rooms, they can start letting us do socially distanced in-person press conferences again or something to that effect i i don't know it's gonna take a while for it all to get back to normal i think eventually it will but i i mean it could be a lot worse than it is right now but i i do hope that once the pandemic is over the zoom access goes away yeah, it is. It's weird just to see kind of that interaction with post game press conference from a, from a Zoom call. Um, it's from just a fan perspective, just watching on on YouTube. Um, so so hopefully things do get back to where it was pre pandemic. Um, Sean, thank you very much for joining us. Um, please push where we can uh, find you on social media and any projects that you're working on for this year as well. So you can follow me on Twitter at Hiken. Uh, the last thing I wrote for BR was that Markel Fultz column after the his knee injury. I've got a couple other things I'm working on right now that are just kind of in different stages of completion. So but just follow me on Twitter, at Hiken, and that'll be kind of where, where you can find any of that stuff whenever it uh, is coming out. Awesome, Sean. Um, thank you for taking time out of your um, Saturday to join the show. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, anytime.